At this point, we've been able to create a one-dimensional Maxwell's equations model that generates a pulsed electromagnetic plane wave, one that propagates in the positive x direction, and one that propagates in the negative x direction. The wave that propagates in the negative x direction is absorbed by the PML. This is the side of the grid that points upward towards the sky. Something perhaps obvious that we still need to do in our model is that we need to add the snow and the ground and the person into the simulation. From this table that we looked at earlier, in order to account for the snow, the ground, and the person, we need to account for the electrical properties of these materials as listed here, the conductivity and the relative permittivity. Luckily, when we were figuring out how to model an absorbing boundary, we simultaneously figured out how we can account for other materials, other materials that have a conductivity. And the coefficients that we came up with also came up with a way to account for the relative permittivity. Here are the updating coefficients we developed for the PML region of the grid. Notice that these have conductivity and permittivity. Permittivity is epsilon equal epsilon r epsilon naught, so now we have a way to account for these material parameters. First, we can note that none of the materials in this table are magnetic, so there is no magnetic loss. So this sigma star is going to be equal to zero, except in the PML region. Also, the permeability, mu, is going to be equal to that of free space, mu naught, because uh, none of the materials are magnetic. Then, for the CA and CB coefficients, we can set the sigma at each grid cell equal to the conductivity that is listed in this table, according to what material is located at that position. Remember, snow is a mixture of air and ice. So for snow, here's air and ice. For snow, we're going to use epsilon r equal 1.6, and we're going to use conductivity of 0. So if the primitivity is not already an array in your model extending across the grid for each EZ component, you'll want to turn an epsilon into an array now in the same manner that sigma is an array. Signal processing is not the focus of this course. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the fairly simple source time waveform that we've developed. And we're going to also have a good amount of distance between the location of the source and the surface of the snow. This way, we will be able to completely separate, separate out the incident wave propagating downward and towards the snow from any reflections that are generated by the snow or the person or the ground. Typically, we don't ever want to model a source immediately next to a perfectly matched layer. So let's put the source about 20 cells away from the PML. So if I have this up here is the PML and this is 10 cells thick, then let's have another 20 cells before we have our source. So the source will then be at i equal 30. Then let's say the surface of the snow will be 30 meters below the source. So this will be 30 meters. Now, you might be tempted to define the spatial index of the snow surface like this. I'm going to say i for index, grid cell number. i surface of the snow is 30 cells, because that's where our source is, plus another 30 meters divided by delta, so that this is in units of grid cells, and then this will also be units of grid cells. But first, it's a good idea to define a parameter to hold the location of the source. Since we'll be using the source to define where the surface of the snow should be, and again in the part of the code where the source is implemented. So to define the source location, we could use a variable like i source. I'm going to set that equal to 30. Another issue with the definition of i surface, as I've written it here, is that if we divide 30 by delta, we might not get an integer for an answer. But in the discretized grid, we can only have integer indices. So it's a good idea to round to the nearest integer. 
So now, putting all this together, I'm going to instead define I surface is going to be equal to, uh, and I could put the round anywhere. I'll just put it around the whole thing. Round to the nearest integer, I source, plus 30 over delta. So the important thing here, since I source is already an integer, round has to at least be around the 30 over delta. Next, let's make the thickness of the snow 20 meters. So all of this together is going to be 20 meters. And go ahead and put snow throughout the entire 20 meters here. That way, if we don't have a body in the snow, if we run a simulation where we're not going to have the body, there will be snow where the body would normally be. And if you do put the body in the snow, you can just overwrite the snow with the electrical parameters of the body. For now, we will put the top surface of the body 10 meters below the surface of the snow. And we're going to make the thickness of the body 45 centimeters. As output, it would be nice to observe the electric field over time somewhere in the air region near the source so that we can observe any reflected waves. We had an observation point earlier when we tested the PML. So what we can do now is just move this observation point so that it is maybe 10 cells away below the source. So I'm going to call this, this is easy ops for observation point n, where we're going to record it over all time steps. And I'm going to set that equal to easy i source plus 10. or we could also define a new i variable, i, like i observation, to store the observation point. If we do this, we should first expect to see the incident wave propagating downward from our source towards the ground, and then we should see all the reflections generated by the different material layers. The last thing we need to do is decide what to set i max equal to. As we decide what to set IMAX equal to, we, do we also need to add a PML absorbing material on this side of the grid? Or if not, how do we decide what to set IMAX equal to?